there movie friends welcome back to the channel today we're going to be doing a reaction to none other than our fan favorite like i've said before uh, our fan favorite nostalgia critic uh today we're going to be doing a reaction to his muppet uh the muppet christmas carol uh review so um without further ado <clears throat> I got my headphones ready. Let's, uh, oh, in three, two, one. That's VPN, the best VPN there is. Take back your online privacy today. Is that so? Dang, a system's check. Late system's check. Don't know why. Not gonna miss this fucking intro. Yeah. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy, remember? So you don't have to. Does anyone else find it strange that one of the most popular renditions of a 19th century novella written by one of England's most celebrated authors has talking socks in it? What? Oh, uh, right. <laughs> released in 1992 and underperforming at the box office, Muppet Christmas Carol has become a beloved film for many as it was the first version of Christmas Carol many kids saw growing up. Mm -hmm. As I understand, I grew up with the Mickey Christmas Carol and I'll always hold a place in my heart. But objectively, I don't know if I call it one of the greatest adaptations. I was kind of wondering the same thing about the Muppet version. Is this truly one of the great adaptations or are people's nostalgia remembering it better than it was? Well, I find there's two camps when it comes to Christmas Carol adaptations. The excited younger crowds that haven't lived with it very long. Oi, this is the greatest thing ever made by humans is what, what? And the older crowd who have seen it so many times they're sick to death of it. Oh my god, enough already. How many times do I have to hear a stick of holly through his heart? Oh, you <laughs> just need a visit from the ghosts of Christmas. Blow me, Pip. And then there's a smaller group of people like me. The Christmas Carol snob. Well, there goes my new character. Now what am I supposed to do to pass the time? What? Ooh, Bolero! I'm one of those people oh, who loves the story so much, I've never seen what I consider a definitive version. So I actually have problems, a... But they all have problems yeah. here and there. With that said, I'm also one of those people who can always find something good in every version. Even if it's an awful rendition, just a basic telling of the story still brings a smile to my face. If Mr. Magoo and the Flintstones time travel to do a crossover, I'd probably find something of value in it. Somewhere within all these different viewpoints, there must be a way to figure out where the Muppets fall in this lineup. Hmm. So whether you're the cheerful optimism of the season, Tiny Tim is the most delightful. Actually, on a, an album, Pimple like a record, the uh, tired the, theory of tedium. You want to know how long frogs live? Ten years. Tiny Tim's dead. Or somewhere Damn. in between. <laughs> this is the Muppet Christmas Carol. We begin with the most 1992 logo, a CG laser carving out the face of Kermit the Frog. Mm -hmm. yeah, Muppets are badass now. Remember when Sesame Street opened with Big Bird walking through an explosion? One of the things I like about this film is right off the bat, the set kind of looks like a Muppet. It's a smaller, simpler version of what you're used to, and it clearly took craft in making. But it's also enjoyably cheap looking. It's clearly not a real town. It's not even a miniature. It's a medium -ture. This is done so that people and Muppets can exist on the same floor while still looking cinematic. I actually argue this is the first Muppet film to have interesting angles. Sometimes the others have variations, but for the most part they were shot straight on. And I get it, they were thinking about hiding the puppeteers. But in this one, the shots weren't altered to make the puppets work, the puppets were altered to make the shots work. Part of the reason being this is the first Muppet film to use CG to take out the puppeteers. Which is a good hmm. way of advancing the technology, but still keeping that low-key look. With that yeah. said though, everyone moves in accordance with the Muppets, which has always been part of the charm. Look how small Scrooge's steps have to be. No one walks like that. He has to make four feet look like a mile. In reality, he's on a plank with the puppeteers below him. It looks a little weird, but you feel the effort and dozens of hours put into every shot because of it. But okay, I know I'm talking a lot about the technicals. How are the Muppets themselves? Well, they still got those cute one-liners. Hey, I'm being stolen! Hey, help me! Help me! 
Ah, yes, back when this was the only property Disney acquired. Oh, <laughs> get SpongeBob next! Gonzo oh, God. Is introduced as the author slash narrator Charles Dickens. Hey, wait a huh? second. You're not Charles Dickens. I am too. Look at my nose and tell me that's not my name. <laughs> the songs are really good. That's actually like pretty good. Legend Paul Williams. There goes Mr. Outrage. There goes Mr. Sneer. He has no time. Puppet is using puppets. I just shit myself. <laughs> but you might have noticed something a little different about this Muppet project compared to the others. It surprisingly takes itself seriously. In the past, the idea was whenever the Muppets would tell a well-known story, their larger-than-life personalities would screw it up somehow. They'd still be hard, but you usually watch them to see how not to tell the story. Here comes the beautiful horse-drawn coach you've all been waiting for! <laughs> This is the first one not only to use text directly from the source, but also not have Kermit as the lead. Which I think makes sense for a more dramatic telling. Every idiot who says Merry Christmas should be boiled in his own pudding and buried with a stick of holly through his heart. Yeah! Kermit. I'm Cratchit, aren't I? <laughs> because of all that, this is a more kid-friendly version of the Muppets. Still a few jokes for the grown-ups, but not as heavy as the previous films. Now, hmm. Weed a Base in a Gravy, are you telling me that there's not genius behind Light the Lamp, Not the Rat? Hey, Light the Lamp, Not the Rat! Light the Lamp, Not Oops. the Rat! I mean, it's cute. But... Bullshit! My Muppets would let their anger build up and then freak out on each other. Kermit would never do that. He's kind and nice and always gentle in a tough situation. You don't have to come in here and try to tell me about one of the cars. You have done that to me too many times, but I will not stand for it, I will not stand for it. Of course it's an orange, I just told you it was an orange. Piggy, you are fired, you are fired, Piggy, you are fired. been emotionally scarred. That's bad. Check out their old coffee commercials. All right. Uh, I really don't think you're ready for that yet. Oh, God. They're a little harsh. He always was a cutout. Also, nobody with a clean conscience can make a horse this scary. Right? It's like if Woody's horse lived in a crack house. <laughs> oh, God. horrible yellow eyes. <laughs> Michael Caine plays Scrooge this time around, and give him credit, he said he had no intention of winking at the camera and wanted to play it as seriously as if there were no puppets around him at all. I honestly believe him, but weirdly enough, I think he's kind of underplayed. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I love a subtle Scrooge. The looks Alastair Sims and George C. Scott shoots are some of the most layered expressions I've seen in cinema. More often than not, Scrooge is usually too over the top, so I like that he scaled it back, especially with wide-eyed puppets around him. But that means when he does have to be expressive, it comes across as a little odd. December is the foreclosure season. Harvest time for the moneylenders. That was a face like he just let out a fart. Harvest time for the moneylenders. <laughs> he seems to have weird inflections at weird moments. Mr. Scrooge. Bob. Bob Cratchit. He said that like he hadn't seen Cratchit in years. Right. Bob. Bob Cratchit. From eight hours ago. Where have you been all these minutes? And then there's this. This is my favorite thing ever. What is this? It's so awkward. It's amazing. I want to marry this. I want to have this scene's baby. So many Dr. Evils doing the Macarena will populate the world. I love you scene. Come on, just do me. Do me scene. What are you? Now, before you kill me, I don't think he's bad. He actually has some of my favorite <laughs> scenes from any Christmas Carol. I think I've just been spoiled by so many Scrooges that I judge them a little harsher than I would other performances. But objectively, I know he works well enough. He's still cold, domineering, and has to pretend people's hands are their faces. That can't be easy. So don't worry, I'll point out the good stuff. But as a comedian, I can't stay away from stuff like this. Huh? <laughs> We're from the Order of Victoria Charity Foundation. We'd like to speak to you about a donation. I would love some eyes. Some of us are endeavoring to raise hey. fun for the poor and the homeless. Don't pick on him. We're collecting for drug addicts. As you can see, my partner has been on cocaine since birth. Dr. Ann Beaker. You may on. use it. <laughs> I can't be the only one who thinks Beaker flicks him off there. <laughs> it's just all his obscenities being censored. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sad little bunny. Yeah, the more shit that can happen to that puke, the better. How can you say that, you barney little... Actually, the puppeteers thought that too. 
director Brian Henson said before Jim Henson died, they were trying out new characters, and this one tested very strongly. It just so happens all the puppeteers hated him because he was too cute. This kind of pandering might have worked at yeah. Sesame Street, but this was the Muppets, goddammit! So, every chance they could put him in some form of misery, whether it's slamming the door in his face, throwing things at him, or letting him freeze in the cold, they worked it in. I'm not gonna lie, knowing that actually makes his scenes a lot more entertaining. Now that's the stuff I like. That is it's kind of really disturbing, awful. but... Oh, come on. Did you see their outtake when Tiny Tim died? May I have his dinner? <laughs> <laughs> You're ruining Muppets for me. Yeah, that's strange. Usually Disney does that. Scrooge lets Kermit the Frog as Bob Cratchit have Christmas off, so him and the bookkeepers celebrate. The world is at her best, you know, when people love and care. All right, boys, let's spread some disease. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Today, that's good for everyone. As much as I enjoy this song and the overall atmosphere, with the puppets and the Christmas decorations, does anyone else feel like this is a McDonald's commercial? Tell me you couldn't see Muppet Happy Meals at the end of this. Oh, God. Christmas Day. Scrooge makes it home and is approached this time by a pair of Marleys, portrayed appropriately by Statler and Waldorf. <laughs> believe it. Why do you doubt your senses? A slight disorder of the stomach can make them cheat. For months I've been eating at Arby's and I've been seeing these foam puppet people everywhere. There's more of gravy than of grave about you. More of gravy than of grave? What a terrible pun. Where do you get those jokes? Wait, I remember where that's <laughs> from. Bah humduck. It's good to be heckling again. It's good to be doing anything again. <laughs> <laughs> the gravy joke was better. They sing, of course, about how Scrooge will be haunted by three ghosts who will try to save his I do, I do like, uh, chains and those jokes. guys there. We evicted the entire orphanage, all standing in the snowbank with their little frostbitten teddy bears. <laughs> uh, I'll let the fact that the other is technically named Bob Marley override some of these. Whoa, that's scary stuff. Hey, should we be worried about the kids in the audience? No, it's all right. This is culture. Wait until we do a tale of two cities. Fozzie's head will roll. Oh, oh my God. We're told, the ghost of Christmas past appears that night. Are you the spirit who's coming? With that one was, I always thought was kind of like, neat, but like creepy at the same time. You look like one of those babies that shits charms. <laughs> <laughs> There's a dildo nose smurf and a hairy poop who hooked onto my balls. Are they part of the tour? Seriously, why was that written? Spirit, yes, nothing. She takes him to the past where he revisits his childhood. I kind of love this kid playing young Scrooge because he only has one line, but he says it like he's the only one who realizes he's talking to puppets. You become a man of business. I'm looking forward to it, Headmaster. What is happening? I'll just say it, I think this whole movie was made for this one joke. And there he is, old Fuzzywick himself. Maybe they were on the fence at first, but as soon as they realized they could use Fuzzywick, they wrote yes all over the contract. This is followed by the second biggest laugh, Animal now playing the drums and forced to instead tap the triangle. <laughs> that could be an ad for depression medication, it's so sad. <laughs> Depression is a serious medical condition that can take so much out of you. Young Scrooge meets a girl named Belle, and years later they part ways due to his love of business over her. I love you, Belle. But I love business more! Now, depending on the version you have, this may lead to... The most unfairly cut song in cinematic history! The cheesiest fluff crap in a film filled with fluff crap! The divisive when love is gone. Love is gone. Love is gone. This was cut from the theatrical version, put back in for the VHS release, and then taken out again for the DVD transfer. People either love or hate this song. And once again, I'm somewhere in the middle. Bottle and stopper, how can you be? Tis a wonderful and heartbreaking melody. She's friggin' smiling while she sings. What kind of psycho bitch smiles while dumping someone? Really, that's never happened to you. Only four times. <laughs> a year. Both four times right. a year. It is a very nice song, but the orchestration and almost 
happy way she sings it makes it come across very corny. Even for a Muppet movie. It's saving grace is when Kane joins in. Yeah, I know I ragged on him a little bit, but this is one of those moments where he really nails it. He sings her words, both remembering and justifying the truth behind them, causing him to tear up when he realizes what he lost. It's actually one of my favorite moments in any Christmas carol. And yes, some dreams come true. And yes, some dreams fall through. This is what pushes it to leaving it in for me. Because without it, what's Rizzo even crying for? The less than <laughs> one minute of screen time the two share together? Oh, that was a riveting 53 seconds. I don't know, it's not a perfect moment, but there's too many good things in it to cut out. Why do you delight yeah. in torturing me? You know I sing like a cockney William Shatner, yet you gave me two bloody songs. I'm gonna have Katzenberg cut this number. He's made some good points, but I mean, I guess, I think it's just because uh, I would enjoy it more. I have seen it. It's just been forever since I've actually sat down and watched it. But um, I think I liked it more because, you know, it's, I guess, like he said, it's nostalgia. I mean, it's, uh, it's the Muppets. I mean, what's not to like about the Muppets, <laughs> you know? Scrooge has returned back home, but he gets another visitor. No, oh, I knew I shouldn't have licked Kermit before shooting. Come in and know me better, man. My god, he looks like Jabba the Hutt melting into that <laughs> princess from Brave. Ew. Did I already say that? You did. Yeah. This is the Ghost of Christmas Present, played by a Jim Broadbent impression, who has one of my favorite additions to this character, a bad memory. You're a little absent-minded spirit. My mind is filled with the here and now, and the now is Christmas. That's actually rather brilliant. I'm shocked yeah. more adaptations don't work that in. I also right. like that Scrooge legitimately gets along with him. It adds something different, and it makes sense he would lower his defenses a bit as he changes through the night. It totally makes you forget the Cabbage Patch demons you convince yourself were cute. Ew. It is the season of the heart. He sings It Feels Like Christmas, and yeah, I won't talk about this dance again. Well, one more. I love it when he's <laughs> like, oh, got to move, and he's like, oh, I almost tripped, but I didn't. It was a dance. And we get a nice crane shot revealing this couple walking down alleyway, realizing it was the end of the set, so they stand there awkwardly. I wish to see friends. Kin, show me family. <laughs> Scrooge is taken to his nephew's You know, I didn't know, I've never noticed that before. SNL Muppets. And they have some fun at his expense. An unwanted creature. It's Ebenezer Scrooge. Yes. <laughs> it was Damn. The moment that Ebenezer vowed to murder his nephew and his entire family. <laughs> Oh, what a jackass that Ebenezer seems like. Wait a minute, you're Ebenezer. Oh, 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 did I say what a jackass that Ebenezer seems like? Wait a minute, you're Ebenezer. Oh, 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 oh did I say? They next visit Bob Cratchit's house and we see that Miss Piggy plays his wife. It smells so good, mother. It does, doesn't it? Ew. Never do that again, Piggy. We also see Tiny Tim, who not only has a terrible cough, but also has to walk with a crutch and an extra wire on his hand. Such a meager feast. But very much appreciated. That awkward moment when the family is starving so much, Piggy is forced to make a Sophie's choice and eat one of her daughters. Though to be oh, fair, she does know someone who can do frog legs. God bless us, everyone. Life is full of sweet surprises. Every day's a gift. Okay, I'm just gonna say what you're not supposed to say. I don't like Tiny Tim in any adaptation. <gasps> Damn! <laughs> I'm starting to like this guy more and more. <laughs> He's surprisingly a tough character to adapt. Everyone thinks if they just throw a kid with big eyes and an innocent smile, that'll tug at your heartstrings enough, but it's a bit more than that. In the book, he's supposed to be wise beyond his years because he knows he may not have much time left. In your mind, you can imagine how a sick child would say these words in a convincing way. It's very difficult to translate that to screen without it looking too... Jesus-y. I mean, look at this scene. It should come with a warning. May raise blood sugar. Don't watch it diabetic. Teach us in our dreams. And please, yes, please. It's sappier than a maple tree with the Berenstain Bears and Keebler Elves living in it. Damn! The I've ever come to liking Tim maybe is in Scrooged or Mickey Christmas Carol. And that's only because they barely said a thing. 
And you know, even when they did, it felt a little lame. God bless us, everyone. Oh my, look at all the wonderful things to eat. Ugh. I always feel more bad for Crabtree and Scrooge's reactions to hearing Tiny Tim passed away than actually hearing Tiny Tim passed away. Maybe I just haven't seen enough of them, but he always seems so perfect, it feels too manipulative. But with the way it's written, that's hard not to do. Don't make me bangle your mash. Cheerio, what, what? Hey, I like you. You want to catch a beer and talk about more dead kids? I think we have different ideas of pastime. You sure? I read the ending of Bridge to Terabithia every night before I go to sleep. I'm busy for the rest Jesus. of the Jesus! The spirit reveals his time is at an end, resulting in death by Skittles Pox, and the ghost of Christmas future appears. I fear you more than any specter I have yet met. Why do I always think one of the hens from Chicken Run is under that robe? Mm. That was a weird cut, by the way. By the way. We find the future has disregarded all that Scrooge held dear, mainly himself. I'd just like to know what he's done with his money. Yeah, oh, wouldn't right. we all? I like the choice of animals here, making the bankers pigs and the scrounging vermin literally vermin. I also think Kane plays naive very well here, not knowing yet why the Cratchit home feels so empty. So quiet. Why is it so quiet, Spirit? Did a screening of Appy Time Murders just let out? <laughs> Joking aside, the tone of performances are pretty perfect here. There's a real brutality to Kermit's words, seeing how this was the first Muppet film after Jim Henson's passing. Life is made up of meetings and partings. That is the way of it. I am sure we shall never forget Tiny Tim or this first parting that there was among us. Mm, guess I made it impossible to get a laugh out of that, so let's go to the next scene. Are these the shadows of things that will be? Or are they the shadows of things that may be only? Scrooge is, of course, shown his own grave, and he vows to change his ways and be a decent man. I will honor Christmas and try to keep it all the year. Tell me that I may sponge out the writing on this stone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for years I always saw this as very anticlimactic. I don't need him yeah. screaming, falling into the grave like other versions, but my heart's not even racing at this moment, and for a long time, I couldn't figure out why. At first, I thought it was Kane's performance, but the more I watch it, he does fine. When it cuts to him returning to his room, though, I feel unsatisfyingly empty, and the climax of the movie yeah. should not leave you that way. So what was missing? This time around, I finally put it together. It's the music. The music for the majority of the movie is fine, but for whatever reason, it is very soft and underplayed here. I do not understand that. To see if I would make a stronger connection with grander music, I decided to switch them out, and, well, you be the judge. <laughs> I, I will honor Christmas and try to keep it all the year. Tell me that I may sponge out the writing on this stuff. <laughs> Now that felt like a climax. <laughs> the following scene so finds some what she at said. In the <laughs> All heaven in the Christmas time be praised for this day. I say it on my knees, Jacob and Robert. On my knees. Oh, it's that kind of movie. Whoa! <laughs> okay, I can't be too mean as I actually really enjoy him singing the song Thankful Heart. It's a good number, and despite, like I said before, Kane not exactly being the best singer, his demeanor is so pleasant, it's hard not to enjoy it. You simply count his friends. Mm, he's so happy. And a promise to share the wealth. It's a good try. Who knows when it ends? I think Albert Finney did worse. I think. But like I said, it's so joyful, and even his interactions with Kermit and Piggy are pretty friggin' adorable. You can leave this house at once! And therefore, I'm about to raise your salary. Oh, and I am about to raise you right off the pavement and onto the... Pardon? Pardon? No, I said divorce that <laughs> bitch and I'll raise your salary. <laughs> they sing a reprise, or first rendition, maybe, of When Love Is Gone, called When Love Is Found, and they, of course, have a Merry Christmas. And Tiny Tim... Who did not die? Oh, isn't that swell? He was ran over by a carriage the following year. Poor oh, kid never God. played Frogger. So, with all the problems you pointed out, and the millions of other versions, was this as underwhelming as you expect? I don't know. I think <laughs> it still works pretty well. What? <laughs> oh, jolly, I 
apples and pears. Oh, God. Shut up. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Like grades, but it does have some great elements in it. I'll admit, I would have liked a version similar to the old Muppet days where everything goes wrong and it's geared a bit more towards adults. But I'm also happy <laughs> that so many kids have an intro to this that includes so many lines from the original. They could have gotten by fine not using the text from the book, but they went that extra mile, and at a time when a lot of kid-friendly versions didn't do so. The problems I have are not major ones, certainly not anything I would describe as awful, they're just a touch off sometimes. The moments that work not only work though, but they add a lot of little touches that go a long way. My favorite mm -hmm. moments are surprisingly the extra stuff they throw in, the ghost memory loss, Scrooge singing with Belle, the character casting, and the catchy songs. For someone who loves this story, that's more than enough to say this is a flawed but still worthy adaptation for people to see. <laughs> I can agree with that. Come on, it's awful and you know it. Okay, this is going beyond being sick of Christmas Carol. You have a legit hatred of this movie. <laughs> well, yeah, I was supposed to play Scrooge. I say, what, what? Yeah, what are you talking about? It made sense to cast me as Scrooge because of my past being so violent and all. Violent? But they preferred a human actor, not someone who wanted to spread the word about a certain beverage. What? What the jolly jolly are you talking about, you bloody wanker tanker? What are you drinking in that mug? Some of Wilkins coffee. Of course, you are gonna be the star so you can spread the evils of Wilkins coffee. You know, a house isn't a home without Wilkins coffee. Well, you're not gonna oh get away with God. it this time. I know what's gonna happen because I have my own ghost of Christmas future. I hate to tell you, but you don't have a future. Wilkins is still evil, run! My God. That's great. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> anyway, um... If you guys like this kind of uh, content, go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, and uh, go ahead and check out our YouTube membership and our Patreon if you are into uh, special uh, content. And it also helps us out. Helps us out in the channel, gets us new equipment, lets us, allows us to go on road trips and that sort of thing. Mm, excuse me. But anyway, until next time, my eyeball. Ah! I'll see you in the next video. Bye!